Thank you. Jay, thank you, my friend. Appreciate you, brother. Uh, for those of you, any basketball players in here? Are there any basketball players? No, no basketball players? Whatever you do, okay, we got one. Okay, don't play him in horse, okay? Jay can shoot. He, he, he might tell you something different, but Jay can shoot. He can play. Uh, I, listen, I'm, I'm, my name is Tomas Martinez, and I'm, I'm really excited to be here today to talk to seniors. Now, I'm going to ask for something, and, and, it's, and, and hopefully this is not too strange. You can, if it's okay, I'm going to ask them, uh, all of the, uh, the leaders for Leader Step, I, I want you to have your phone... And just set it right in, either, right in front of you or in your lap because I, I, I'm going to do something with your phone in a minute. But I just want you to have it available. I know we live in a time and in a day where you probably have it already in your hand anyway, and that's okay. All right? So you could just have it available because I'm going to need you to help me with my presentation today. Does that sound fair? All right, my speech today is about the journey ahead. I want to talk about the journey ahead for you. And for all of you that are here, your journey is just beginning. You're just at the starting point of your journey. Raise your hand if you know where you're going to go to school, college. Raise your hand. All the way up, all the way up. I want to see. All the way up. You already know. Okay, hands down. Love it. Raise your hand if you already know what you want to study. You're like, I already know what I want to study. Wow, I love it. All right, I love it. This is a good group. Um, guess what? 25 years ago, I was sitting where you were sitting. Yes, I could be your dad. It's, cre it's creepy to say. It's weird. It's, I can't, just the thought of it kind of freaks me out a little bit, right? But here's the thing. This is interesting. 25 years ago, I was sitting where you were sitting, and guess what? That first question, I couldn't answer. Had no idea what school I was going to. The second question, what was I going to study? Guess what? No answer. Had no idea what I wanted to do. No clue. And it's important for me to start with that because you, even though you're at the beginning of your journey, the leaders that are in this room, you are already well on your way. And for today's journey ahead, what I want to share with you, just from my heart, is I want to come to you not from a parent point of view, I don't want to come from you from a teacher point of view. I, I don't want to come from you from, you know, that weird uncle, right, that just, you know, always has weird advice. I, I just want to, I want to imagine that we, we just happen to meet, and I'm just going to walk alongside you and just share some things from my life. Does that sound fair? And then as we go through this, at the very end, here's what I'm going to ask. I, I, I want to go through some Q&A. OK, I want to go through a, just some Q&A where you just get to ask a question of me, things that I've learned along my journey, maybe something that I didn't share that you might want to hear. So as you're as we're going through this, if something clicks and you're like, oh, I really got to ask him about this, just jot it down, write it on your paper and uh, keep that ready for the Q&A. So you were introduced to me as to where I am today, business owner right? Married. Uh, he didn't talk about that. My wife and I have been married in December 20 years, longer than all of you have been alive. Another weird statement, right? 20 years my wife and I have been married. Now, you look at me today and you go, oh, he owns a school. He owns a business. Oh my gosh, his parents must have a lot of money, right? Or, or he probably went to the best schools. I went to SAC. Y'all don't know what SAC is. Y'all don't know what SAC is? San Antonio Community College? That alumni of SAC. Okay, no alumni. Okay, all right. This is the deal. I need you to understand that my journey wasn't perfect, and neither will your journey be perfect. So I got to go way back. I'm going to go back to 16. Are you ready? Guess where I worked? H-E-B. Anybody work at H-E-B? Any H-E-B work? All right. Baggers? Cashier, I, I moved up. It took me a little bit longer. That cashier's test was tough, okay? It got me a few times, all right? Uh, so I became a bagger at HEB. Anybody ever uh, bag groceries, right? It's not that bad. It's actually kind of fun. You know what I learned while bagging groceries at HEB? 
I learned that at night I would wake up in the middle of the night and I'd be bagging groceries in the middle of my sleep. I would have these nightmares that the groceries never ended. And over time, guess what happened? That went away. And then for bagging groceries at HEB, I went off to college because I wanted to play basketball. I wanted to play for UT, Duke. I, I, I had this dream, but guess what happened? Duke, UT, none of them called. I'm a little short, as if you guys didn't know that already. Um, and so I decided to go to Wayland Baptist. I made my high school senior year, just like you, I made a highlight video of all my highlights in high school. Now we got to go back because this was in 1993. This is VHS. I'm talking big camcorder, like massive thing. We were literally putting the articles in front of the video camera and recording them and then moving them away. This is how we had to do it back then, right? It was crazy. So I send this highlight video and Wayland Baptist called me to go play at Wayland Baptist. So while at Wayland Baptist, no scholarship, my mom had to pay for everything, I got a chance to play basketball. It was amazing, amazing experience. But what I had to do there is my mom didn't make a lot of money, so I had to work. So I started waiting tables. Anybody wait tables in here? Oh, yes. Okay. Waiting tables is awesome. If there's a job that I would recommend for college, it's waiting tables. Because you know what's always in your pocket? She knows. What's always in your pocket? Cash. Lots of it. And I love that. I worked at a restaurant called a Cotton Patch. Anybody ever heard of the Cotton Patch? Yeah? Boy, let me tell you, that if you've ever had uh, uh, that blueberry cobbler, oh my goodness. I had to have it every day. So here's the thing. So I start waiting tables. And then I went to the Golden Corral. Who's ever eaten at Golden Corral? Oh yeah, you know Golden Corral. Those biscuits with that honey butter? Forget about it, right? So I worked at uh, uh, Golden Corral. Now I'm doing this for a reason, because remember, what's my, what, what's my topic about? The journey ahead, and I'm gonna be talking about mindset, right? So the journey ahead for all of you. So then I go for, from Cotton Patch to Golden Corral. I end up coming back to San Antonio, and I get a job telemarketing. Calling people at six o'clock while they're at dinner to sell them long distance phone lines. You talk about an amazingly difficult job. Have you ever gotten a telemarketing call? Y'all bet all of you have sell. Everybody here, do you have a, I want to, I'm curious. Everybody that's here that you have your own personal cell phone, stand up. If you have your own personal cell phone, stand up. Own personal cell phone, stand up. Is that everybody? Wow. That's everybody. Can we live without a cell phone? Can we? I guess we can. I, I, go ahead, take a seat, right? I, this is showing me we, we've got to have a cell phone, right? But I want to tell you something. You know what I had in 1994? I had a beeper. Does anybody even know what a beeper is? You've probably seen it in movies. It's that little thing that beeps and then you, then you got to go where? Then you had to actually go to a pay phone and call people. So getting back to San Antonio, I end back in San Antonio and I decide I'm going to go wait tables and after telemarketing, after calling people for two years, I did that for two years. Do you think that I learned a lot calling people and trying to sell them long distance? I learned a lot during that time. I even learned about work ethic during that time. And so then I decided, you know what, I'm going to go, I want to work at somewhere kind of fancy. I went to Papacitos. Anybody ever eaten at Papacitos? Right? I was a waiter at Papacitos. And, and let me tell you, that's basically like joining the military because they don't mess around. We had the buddy system. We had to count the sugars that were in the little deal like it was militant. We had to line up the salt and pepper exactly the right height. It was really tough. And so I said, you know what, I need something a little more casual. I went and got a job at Jim's. Who's ever eaten at Jim's? Jim's? Oh, man. Tortilla soup? All day, right? Love Jim's. Now, again, I'm telling you all of this because my topic is about the journey ahead. Because here's the deal. Every one of those jobs that I'm talking about today has brought me to where I am right at this very moment. The fact that I married my wife in 1999 that moment that I got married in 99, think about that, right? Most of y'all were born when? 2000, right? So I, was, I got married in 99, 
And that moment that I got married changed everything. Because here, as I stand before you, I would not even be standing before you without being married to the woman that I'm married to. Because who you marry and who you date, it matters. It's really, really important. And I am just, I'm blown away and I always share that because, you know, my wife is very special and I wouldn't even be, have the opportunity to talk to you without uh, having that relationship with her and being married almost 20 years. So then, all of that time, what was I doing? While I was working all these jobs, what was I doing? I was going to school. I went to UTSA. I went to SAC. I went to Wayland Baptist. And I finally, I don't want to tell you how long it took, but after, after so many years, I got my degree. And I crossed that stage. And that was an amazing feeling. And all of you are about to do that in, in high school. But let me tell you, in college, I remember that. And I remember thinking, man, if you would have looked at me senior year and you would have asked my teachers, do you think uh, Tomas, back then they called me T, that was my, my nickname, do you think T's going to graduate and, uh, and gr go to college, let alone become a teacher? I think there'd be some very, very shocked teachers that I had. And that goes into some of the things that I'll talk about a little bit later as far as mindset. Now, I went on to become a teacher. I taught third, fourth, and fifth grade. Anybody want to be a teacher? I'm just curious. Anybody want to be a teacher? Just one? You're going to love it. You're going to love it. It's awesome. Don't listen to them. Okay? Listen, one of the greatest jobs I've ever had was teaching. And I wanted to coach. I really wanted to go to middle school and coach. Uh, but nobody would hire me in middle school. It was the weirdest thing. I could not get a job in middle school. I had a, a science, uh, uh, you know, you can pick your specialization. And for whatever reason, they just had you know, too many hires. They couldn't do it. And so I got stuck in elementary. But let me tell you, it was the best experience of my life. Teaching third graders, teaching fourth graders, teaching fifth graders. I even got a chance to teach at a charter school where I taught sixth graders, which was another amazing experience. And during that entire time I was a teacher, I took up another job because as some of you, the reason why you're probably saying, no, 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 I'm not going to be a teacher. Mm -mm, mm -mm, I'm not going to be a teacher. During that time, you know, when I was a teacher, it, it, the pay was really, really low. Now it's better. Now they're starting at 50 and above. When I started as a teacher, it was $28,000 a year. That's what it was when I started teaching in 19 and two, the year 2000. And so times have changed, thank goodness. And so during that entire time, I had to work another job, and I was a consultant. I actually traveled around the state of Texas teaching teachers. And that was another amazing experience and taught me something. And so again, the journey ahead, okay, just stay with me. We're going on this journey. You're seeing my entire life, and you're seeing all the different jobs that I had and going to school. And this is the moment that I want you to think about, is that all of that in my past has made me who I am today. All of those jobs have taught me who I am today and what I do today. And it's really important. So the journey ahead. Now, going with this idea, here's what I want you to think about, a road trip. How, uh, I want you to go back to when you were in elementary, maybe middle school. Can you remember going on a road trip with your family? Everybody raise your hand if you've been on a road trip. Everybody's been on a road trip. Okay, good. And, and by road trip, I mean more than two to three hours. Everybody's done that, right? Now, this is interactive. I need you to help me with this. Are you ready? Yes. All right. What do you need for a road trip? Go. Food. Yeah. What else? Gas. gas. You need gas. What else? Car. You better have a car. Yeah, hitchhiking as a road trip is probably not a good idea, right? What else? Entertainment. Okay, now go back to middle school, Isaac. What did you have in middle school? What were you rocking? Uh, books. Books. I love it. Uno. Uno. Yes. <laughs> Got to have a mean game of Uno on a road trip, right? What else? I love that. What else for entertainment? But see, for me, it was a Game Boy. Do y'all even remember Game Boys? I had a Game Boy, right? What else? Music. You need music. Who said that? Who said music? All right, uh, Dean, you said music. What, what are we, hey, we're talking middle school. What were you jamming? Give it to me. Come on. <laughs> right? What were you jamming? Yeah. What would you be jamming today? Just tell me, what, if you're on a road trip, Eminem? Middle school's Eminem. 
Eminem. Okay, that's fair. Yep. So he's rocking. He's got his music. What else do we need on this road trip? Blankets and pillows. Blankets and pillows. Yes. Because we need to sleep because we don't want to hear mom and dad argue the whole way there. Right. We got to We got to get that sleep in. What else? Money. Mom, you got to have money. I like it. Tell me your name. David. David. Thank you, David. There's something you're forgetting. Luggage. 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 Movies. I like that. You need your stuff, don't you? That's good. What else? Nah. You said movies, right? Nah. Um, a map. She said a map. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Zoe, is that how you say it, Zoe? Zoe? Zoe said a map. Do, you, do we need a map if we get, need to go somewhere on a road trip? Yeah. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, we don't use paper maps, dude. Like, we don't use those anymore, right? We would say, what would that be? GPS, right? Everybody with me? Now, there's one thing that I, I could sit here for the next three hours and you're not going to say because you're not in this frame of, uh, 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 of mind right now. Right. Oh, 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 we, we might have somebody here. Yes, sir. Destination. We need a destination. I love it. We need to know where we're going. I love it. Right. And not only do we need to know where we're going. Right. If we were doing this in 1993, my high school uh, junior trip when I was in high school, we went all the way to Florida and we didn't have GPS. There was no Google Maps. We literally had to bust open a map. And if you're looking at a map, what do you need to know? First, where you are on the map, right? So here's the last thing that you need. If you're going to get in the car, who has brothers and sisters? Raise your hand. You got brothers and sisters? All right. How, uh, are you the oldest? Raise your hand if you're the oldest. Oh, wow. Okay, most of you are the oldest. Raise your hand if you're the youngest. Now, see, that's always fun. All right. Now, if, depending on where you are in that gap, Depends on how good your road trip was, right? Because if you're the littlest, you kind of get a little spoiled, right? But then your older brothers do what? Your older sisters do what? They just pick on you the whole time. So they can make, kind of make it really, really not fun, right? But here's the thing. When you all start off, can you all remember when you get in that car, you start to envision the trip. Because here's what you need. And this is what I'm going to go into for the rest of my talk. You've got to have the right mindset for the journey ahead. You've got to have the right mindset. And for some of you, when you go on this road trip, what do you start thinking about? If you're going to the beach and you're getting your stuff ready, you're already envisioning what? Being at the beach, being in the sun. Some of you are already thinking about it right now. You're already seeing yourself hanging out with your friends. Oh, it's going to be so much fun. I can't wait. The right mindset is powerful because it's going to help you get through that drive with your little brother or your little sister or your older brother. Because the whole time, as bad as it is on that road trip, right? Maybe, you know, you can only imagine some of the smells that happen in the car on a road trip, right? After so much time. But all of that is to say is that you've got to be in the right mindset so that you get there and you're in a, in, a, in a good state of mind. And so with that said, I want to bring some ideas to you because I need you to help me so that you remember this for the future. I need you to help me. Go ahead and get your phone, open it up, and I need you to search the definition of mindset. Just type it in. Don't do anything else. Go to mindset, type that in, and when you have the definition, stand up. Mindset, just the word mindset. I want the definition. When you have it, stand up. I need everybody to see it and read it. Mindset. Everybody got it? Everybody? All right, who wants to share it out loud? Who wants to share it out loud? Ready? Tell me your name. Sterling. Sterling. Go ahead, Sterling. The established set of attitudes held by someone. Oh, I love it. All right, now let's read it together. Everybody have that? All right, everybody read it together. Go. The established set of attitudes held by someone. Okay, one more time, but say it like you, like you haven't read it for the first time. Ready? Here we go. Ready? Go. The established set of attitudes held by someone. All right, take a seat. Now, with that idea... Mindset. Mindset is the established set of attitudes. 
Now go back to your road trip. Did anybody have a bad attitude about their road trip? Did anybody look at your parents and say, why didn't we fly? <laughs> why did we have to drive to Colorado, right? Did anybody sit in the car and think, you know, man, it would be so much better if we would have dropped little brother off somewhere else and maybe he just didn't come with us, right? But see, here's the thing about mindset. Mindset is something that is established. It's an attitude that is established inside of you. Now, have you ever been to a business where it says established in? Anybody ever seen that, right? Now, what does that mean when it says established in 1979 or established in 1898? What does that mean? Say, say, say it. When it was founded. That's when it all started, right? Now, for some of you, you know, this idea of mindset, this idea of what's established, you may be saying to yourself, I'm not, I, I'm not really sure I have anything established. And I'm here to tell you, everybody in this room has a set of established attitudes that are near and dear to you. And these are what I call, I know. Everybody say, I know. I know. Oh boy, here we go. All right. Ready? You ready? Say, I know. I know. These are things that you know, right? They're established in you. Now, it could be things that have been told to you that you're like, I, I know that, and I'm trying to live towards that, right? I've heard my dad, or I heard my mom, or I heard that weird uncle, I heard him say this, right? But there are things that are established inside of you. And mindset can usually go down two roads. Have you ever had a negative mindset? Yeah, everybody stay with me. Have you ever looked at something and you're just like, oh, here we go, gosh, right? Can we all agree to that? We've had a negative mindset where well, we've looked at something and we've literally, our mind has immediately gone to viewing it negatively, right? Now, there's also a positive mindset. And a positive mindset will look at something and go, well, it's not that bad. It could be worse, right? It could be worse. And there's a book that probably one of you in this room will read. One of you. I'm hoping all of you do. But I'm going to tell you a book. It's called Mindset. You can, you can jot it down in your notes, write it on your piece of paper. The book is by Dr. Carol Dweck. This book was revolutionary for me in my life because it helped me understand the idea of having a fixed mindset and the idea of having a growth mindset. And those two were very different. They're very, very different. Fixed and growth. Which one do you think is negative? Fixed. Okay, good. Fix can be very negative, short-sighted, only seeing the, uh, I'm not good enough. Whereas growth is like, you know what? I'm ready for the challenge. I'm ready to learn. I'm ready to grow. They're two very different. And it's really important that you understand these two. And here's my hope. My hope is this. If you learn absolutely nothing from, from what I'm going to share in just a second about what I know, if you learn nothing, I hope what you'll do is, based on what I'm saying here and based on my journey and your journey ahead, I will hope that you will grab this book. Because if you read it at this stage in your life and you start applying some of the principles of that book, trust me, every a uh, 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 stumbling block you hit, every challenge you face, you'll view it from a completely different mindset. Powerful, powerful book. Now, when it comes to this area, I, I think it's, I got to set the stage for you for this is that, can we all agree that things that we know can change? That they're deep, th they're deep down, you could know something when you were in elementary. Like my son, I play with him outside. He's got all his buddies that come over. And it's absolutely hilarious to hear third, fourth, and fifth graders talk. Because they talk 
as if they know everything. Does anybody have any third, fourth, or fifth grade elementary brothers and sisters? We got the younger ones, right? So David, David, right? David, do, do you ever step back and you hear them and you're just like, they just, they don't get it. They have no clue. They don't get it. They, they literally think they know everything. And I always think that's funny because it's like, hey, buddy, you're nine. You're nine. You don't know everything, right? And so I think it's real important for all of us here to get down to the meat of what it is that you know. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to share some of the things that I know that are deep in my life. Now, because they're things that I know, does that mean that's an I know for you? Does that mean it's an I know for you? It may not be. You may not know that yet, right? You may be going through that process, right? But what I want to share with you are some of the things that I know, some of the things that are important to me that I hope that you can kind of take and hold on to and, 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 and go, you know what, I don't know that yet, but maybe I want to know about that. Maybe I want to know, learn more about that. So everybody, so repeat after me. Say, I know. I know. All right, we'll try it again. Ready? Say, I know. So on the journey ahead, I want to share with you some things that I know. Number one, I know. As long as you have a pulse, there will be struggle. I know that. If you are alive, at points in your life, you will face struggle. Can everybody, can, 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 can we all admit we've, we've all struggled, right? Everybody, there's, is there anybody in here that's never struggled, right? We've all gone through some sort of struggle. And the reason why I put this one is because I think it's really important at your age for you to understand this concept, that struggle is really what leads to growth. And let me give you a perfect story about that. There, there, and, and you may have heard this, and if you have, don't ruin it for other people, okay? But there was a gentleman who found this beautiful cocoon, and he saw that the butterfly inside, he could see it started to peek out. He saw that it was struggling, and he was concerned. And he thought to himself, he's like, how do I help this butterfly, because it's really struggling to get out of this cocoon. I mean, it's, it's fighting, it's, pu- it's doing everything it can. So he thought and he thought and he grabbed a really, really sharp scalpel. And he decided to make a little bitty cut in the cocoon. And then as he made that cut, what do you think happened to that little butterfly? That butterfly popped its wings out. It popped out, crawled out, crawled onto the table. But there was a major problem. Anybody want to know what happened to the butterfly? It couldn't fly. Does anybody want to know why it couldn't fly? Because the young man who thought he was helping the butterfly, he actually took away the struggle. He took it away. And that struggle was the one thing that was going to make the butterfly's wing strong enough to actually fly. And for those of you here in this room, I want you to know that I know this, I know this, I know this, and I want you just, again, I'm walking alongside you, I'm not preaching to you, I just want you to know that I know this, is that life without struggle is not, it's, it, it, that's not the human experience. The human experience will have struggle. Now, really, where, where it really comes down to is how you're going to look at that struggle. Are you going to be fixed and go, oh, woe is me. My life is just full of struggle. Or are you going to look at it and go, you know what? It's time to grow these wings. Because I want to fly. I want to be free to fly. You see, struggle is good. I know it. And let me tell you, I've gone through struggles with my business. I've gone through struggle, of, and, and I, I don't know if I've ever shared this on a, uh, 
uh, in a speech. But there was one point where uh, in the beginning of my business, I was using PayPal, right? And I was charging a bunch of cards and I was getting all and collecting all the money for my business. And you know what PayPal did? PayPal said, you've collected a little bit more money than we've anticipated. We're going to have to hold your money. Can you imagine being told that they can't release the money that you've charged and being told like they're not going to give it to you? Woo, this was a scary moment. This was a moment where I had to, there was a lot of prayer. There was a lot of like, oh my gosh, there was like a lot of phone calls. It was a struggle. But let me tell you, on the other side of that struggle was some freedom. Because guess what we did with PayPal? We said, bye-bye, PayPal. <laughs> we found somebody else, right? But, but we had to go through that struggle to understand, to grow, to be able to stand up for ourselves. It's important. I know that. You're going to need to go through problems because they're gonna make you better. Now, some of you are gonna go to college, all of you, because you all told me you're going to college, right? Everybody's going to college, right? Are, are, do you think you're gonna have a professor that's just, uh, well, how, how can you say it? Maybe he's just not that good. Are you gonna have bad professors? Yeah. Are you gonna have uh, a people in your dorm that just drive you crazy, maybe even a roommate? That just drives you crazy? Yes, you're gonna go through the struggle. But here's what I wanna tell you, is I know that part of that struggle is going to make your wings stronger. It's gonna make the journey at the end of it better. Now remember, what did I tell you was one of my jobs in college. What was I doing? I was a telemarketer. Do you know how many times I was told no? Do you, do you have any idea how many times people say, no, leave me alone. Oh, I hate you. Oh, never call me again. Do you, I mean, literally, I was told no so much that it almost became like a game. How many no's am I going to get today? How many times is someone going to yell at me, right? Because guess what that was doing? Making my wings stronger. So that now when I have the business that I have now, I sell ads in a magazine, right? Do you think people tell me no now? I was ready for it. I had to go through it. It's part of the struggle. Number two, I know. I know my past does not predict my future. My past does not predict my future. And I put this in here for one reason. And I wanted you to understand that when I was in middle school, and everybody remember middle school, right? I was in that low reading group. I was in that class where I really struggled with reading. And when I say really struggled, if we were in a room like this and I had to read something out loud, to this day I would get nervous and be like, oh my gosh, I gotta read out in front of people. Like it would petrify me. And I failed reading for the first time. I remember failing and bringing that home and I actually tried to turn that 68 into an 88. I, I, I actually wrote it. My mom saw it right away, right? Saw it right away. And I can remember that feeling of just like, what is going on? But I want you to understand the past, my reading and, and, and where I was at didn't have to predict where I am today. I read a lot of books. Today, I feel like I am reading to learn and grow on a daily basis. Because when you read, you can lead. When you read, you can help others. You can pour into other people. Reading is a, a special place where you can open up the world in a whole nother way. Your past does not have to predict your future. And with that, here's the next part I know, is that my present right now produces opportunities for the future. My present right now, this moment, is giving me opportunities in the future. And so for those of you here, you're wondering, okay, we've done all this stuff with Leader Steps, we've done these interviews, we've done the mock interviews, we've, we've had these opportunities, we've had speakers come and teach you, right? Every one of those is a moment in time, like right at this moment, where you can take something from today and you can apply it to produce the future that you want to happen later. But you get to decide 
It's in the moment that you make that decision. A lot of times we, I thought for myself is, I'll figure it out later. But here's the thing, time, I don't know, can, can all, all of us agree that you just feel like not too long ago you were in middle school, right? It's like we were just in middle school. We did, we did eighth grade dance. That wasn't that long ago. Time flies. So stay in the moment. Now, the way I think this relates is, is that when you get opportunities to learn and you get opportunities to hear other people, engage and ask questions. I'm hoping that when we do this Q&A, that you'll be ready to ask some questions. I'm hoping that we'll be able to ask some questions. All right, next one. One things I know. This is, this, is a, this is a deep one for where you're at right now in your life. I know that responsibility is the pathway to meaning. Responsibility is the pathway to meaning. At this stage, I can imagine you're, you're, you're in that stage, almost like that cocoon stage of trying to figure out what's going to bring meaning into my life. What's going to make my life really count, right? And what I want to share with you is that when you really take hold of responsibility, and what do I mean by responsibility for an 18, 19 year old? What do I mean by that? Tell me, what do I mean by that? Taking responsibility, what does that mean? Say it out loud. Taking responsibility. What do you think that means? For your grades. Be responsible for your grades. I love it. What else? You're learning. What else? Be responsible for what else? Is that it? Driving. Driving. Stop texting. Put the phone down, right? What else? What's your name? Riley. Say again. Riley. Riley. I love it. Responsibility means when you hit that wall and make a mistake, guess what? This is who I am. I blew it. I love that. What else? Taking responsibility. What about your health? What about your body? Taking care of your body, right? Taking care of who you are. Now, I'm 43 years old, and I have to tell you, I had to come to a realization that, that I was either going to really start making some changes with my weight and where I, what I was doing, or I was going to end up in a place where it was gonna be really difficult to change. I had to take responsibility. And here's what's gonna happen. All of you are gonna to go to freshman year and you're gonna walk into that cafeteria and you're gonna eat three meals a day. You haven't been used to eating three meals. I wasn't. I gained 30 pounds the first year of school. I mean, I came back and instead of being a point guard, I was like a post. I mean, that first year, you're going to get into that groove where you're eating multiple times a day. You're eating three times a day. You're hanging out with friends. Here's the thing. Be responsible. Responsibility gives your life meaning. It helps you decide what it is that you want out of life. Now, I got to share this with you. How many of you uh, grew up watching The Simpsons? Nobody? No Simpsons in here? Oh, that's all right. The analogy still works. This, this story still works. So I'm, I've never really been a Simpson fan, but I, I heard this story about Homer, right? Y'all know who Homer is, right? Homer is uh, the dad, right? So Homer walks into the room, okay? He's got a bottle of mayonnaise and a bottle of vodka. Now, why it's Homer? Who knows? He's just a weirdo, right? And Homer decides, he makes the decision to mix mayonnaise and vodka. And Marge is looking at him like, what, 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 is, what are you doing? And Homer literally goes, that's a problem for future Homer. And he drinks the mayonnaise and vodka. Now, I want you to take that analogy for a second because I need you to understand future you is coming. Future you is coming. In Homer's mind, that's a problem for future Homer. I don't have to worry about that. But here's what I know. Responsibility is the pathway to giving your life meaning. And so you have to take responsibility for what's happening right now. 
You can't say, I'll figure that out. In the, that's a problem for future Isaac. That's a problem for future Zoe. I'm just going to kick the can down the road and let them figure it out. Because here's the thing. When you don't take responsibility, you're not just changing your life. Stay with me. This is really important. You're not just changing your life when you don't take responsibility in a moment because later you, future you, is now connected to who? It could be your wife. It could be your family. It could be your kids. Future you is looking at you now saying, please take responsibility so that we can have meaning. Take responsibility. Don't kick that can down the road. We need you. Future you is saying, please stay in the moment making decisions that are going to help future you. It's so important. These are some of the things that I know. And the last one that I'll share, it's really simple. And then I'll do Q&A because I think we're running close to time, right? How much time do I have left? Ten. Okay, great. So last one is this. I know. Everybody say, I know. I know. No, no, no. Say it with me. I know. I know that clarity, clarity creates motivation. Clarity. The fact that everyone in this room, for the most part, knows where they want to go to college. They already know where they want to go. And the fact that probably 90 percent, 80, I'd say probably 90, already know what they want to study. That's clarity. Now, when you have clarity, guess what? When you have, this is what I know. When I'm really clear on what it is that I want to do, am I motivated to get it done? You are motivated. What happens when you're not clear? When you're not really sure, you're like, hey, I'm not really sure. I don't know where I'm going to go. I don't know what I want to study. I don't know if I really want to go hang out or out. I don't know if I really want to go do this. Then what happens? The motivation does this. It just crashes. Clarity is so important. Knowing what you want, knowing what you want to go after. I know this to be true. When you are clear, when you are clear, guess what? The motivation will come. So now, last part here. I want you to do me a favor. Pull out your, that little note sheet. <laughs> Everybody take a pen real quick. Now, I've shared with you some of the I knows, right? I've shared with you a few of the I knows. You know my story. You know the journey. And the journey ahead, here's what I want you to do for me. I want you to do this for me. It's so important. I want you to write down, I know. And I want you to tell me one statement that you know to be true in your life. I know. This is not going to be easy. This is going to push you a little bit. Tell me something that you know. I know this. All you need is one. And I love the looks on the faces. Because I see the same struggle that I had when I was your age. This is not easy, is it? I know. All you need is one. Now, I'm going to just, th this is very personal. But I think it would be really, really important to hear a couple. Does anybody like to share? You're like, you know what? I got to share this. I got to share this. Tell me something you know. Who would like to share? Anyone? Bueller? Oh, thank you. What's your name? Sydney. Sydney. Would, do you mind standing? Do you mind standing and sharing it? Okay, go ahead, Sydney. Thank you. Listen. Can y'all give her a hand? I don't even care what she has to say. Give her a hand. Thank you. Right? What do you have, Cindy? I know that everything happens for a reason. Ooh. Give her a hand. <laughs> give her a hand. Sydney, listen to me. This is really important. That, 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 number one, just getting that on paper, right? Powerful. The next step, you sharing that with your, your group here, 
powerful. But here's what I will tell you. What you just wrote is going to carry you through some of the toughest times of your life to come. It's going to carry you through because you know it. Seriously, I'm telling you, I wish I had known that at your age. Thank you for sharing that. Anybody else? Anybody else? One more. All I need is one more. Don't be shy. Yes, please, Isaac. Uh, I put, I know that it is easier to take responsibility for your own actions than to blame others. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. Thank you, Isaac. So did y'all hear that in the back? Did y'all hear that? It's easier to take responsibility, right, than to blame it on others. I, know, I love that. Guess what, Isaac? Moving forward at every job you have, if you take that into every job you have, here's what's going to happen. Isaac, he's going to move up. He's going to move up. He's going to move up. Can we all agree, all the adults that are in the room? Because you know what's happening right now? Do you know that I, I've hired people that flat out refuse to take responsibility when they're just dead in the waters wrong? And I mean, it's like, it's not even like close. Like, it's like, dude, come on. And they're like, I don't agree. If you do that, you're just going to keep moving up. So lastly, I, and so for, for some of you, do me a favor. I'm not going to call on you. I promise. Raise your hand if you have something written down. I know. Raise your hand if you got something written down. Okay, good. I'm not going to call on you. Here's what I want you to do later. I'm a journaler. This is my journal. I have about 25 of these in my office that I've done for the last 20 years. And I put everything in here. My entire life's in here. And then what I do is I number the bottom of the pages. You can buy this at Target, by the way. And then I do a table of contents. I have a table of contents for all my journals. This has been one of the biggest things to impact my life is start writing some of this stuff down. And I hope it is for you. And so to end this uh, and then jump into Q&A, here's what I will tell you. Is that on the journey ahead, right, you're going to have struggle. We talked about that, right? On the journey ahead, your past doesn't have to predict your future. On the journey ahead, the present moment is what's going to produce opportunities, right? On the journey ahead, responsibility is going to give your life meaning. And on the journey ahead, really important that you see and understand that clarity, knowing what it is you want, is going to increase that motivation. So Q&A time. Who has a question? Or maybe even a thought? Yes. You talked about getting in the right mindset. Um, besides using I know statements and like kind of talking yourself through it, um, are there any other ways you suggest getting yourself in the right mindset? Oh my gosh, did y'all hear that question? What's your name? Uh, Isabella. Isabella, thank you for that question. Yeah, that's a really good question. She said, are there any other things that help you get in the right mindset? That help you when maybe something other than I know statement, right? Uh, man, that's a great question. Uh, here's what I'll tell you. One of the things is gratitude. Y'all know what gratitude is, right? Everybody knows what gratitude is, right? So one of the things that helps me is that when, when I'm having a, when I'm hitting a wall in my mindset, when my mind is going more negative and going more fixed, what I will typically do is really stop and think about, wait a minute, you know what? I'm alive. I can breathe. I have people in my life that I can talk to about this situation. I have an amazing wife. My son is really cool, right? I start going to a place of gratitude, and then when you go to a place of gratitude, have you ever listed out what, like made a list of what you're grateful for? Have you ever made this list? Now, when you write the list, how do you feel? Happy. Happy. It's like instantly you start going, wow, why do I feel so much better? It's because you're thinking about what's good in your life instead of what's not good. So I appreciate that. I go to gratitude, Isabella. Gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, sir. What's your major? Ah, good question. 
Uh, underwater basket weaving. No, just kidding. Um, I majored in interdisciplinary studies. So uh, because at that time to be a teacher, what, tell me your name? Cole. So at that time to be a teacher, they did interdisciplinary studies, which is kind of like you learn a little bit about everything, right? And then you specialize. And I specialized in sciences. And then uh, so I got my degree from UTSA. And then I later went on to get my master's. I have my master's degree from A&M because uh, I wanted to be an administrator. And so uh, great story. And now that you brought it up, uh, I took the principal test. It took me three times to pass that test. Now, you want to talk about some serious ego kicking? You want to talk about just some painful, like, what is wrong with me? This test, is, listen, remember, what do you have to do? You want somebody to cut you out of the cocoon? Do you want someone to save you at every moment their struggle? Trust me, you don't. You don't. You need to go through the struggle so that you can fly when real adversity comes. So uh, master's degree at A&M, uh, and then I became a, a John Maxwell speaker and coach. I went through that training in 2014, but interdisciplinary studies. How much time we got, Jay? Five? And we don't have to use all of that because we could give you more break. But one last question. I'll just, I know you're, you're, you're less like, I don't know if I want to ask this dude another question. One more question. Anybody else? Maybe something that you thought about. Maybe a question you have about college. Because I've been there, done that. Yes, sir. Tell me your name. Marcus. Marcus, let's go. What do you want to be when you grow up? Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> you know what I love about that question, Marcus? You know what I love about that question, Marcus? I'm 43 years old. How old are you, Marcus? 18. This is what I love, Marcus, because you know what? I wore glasses just like that, right? My hair wasn't that long, right? I, had a, I actually had a, like a buzz cut, like a chili bowl. I literally, they would put a bowl and they would chill. It was like a chili bowl uh, my senior year. Uh, but I had, I had glasses just like that, right? Here's the thing, Marcus. I'm still on the journey just like you. I'm still on the journey. And what I'm finding is on this journey is that it evolves. I never thought I'd be a business owner. I never thought I'd run a company. I never thought I'd be in a position to buy a school. Like we have a hundred little preschoolers going to a school that we own. I never thought I would do that. I, I never thought that I'd be in a position uh, to uh, speak like this all over the U.S., uh, going to D.C. to speak. Um, and so I'm, I'm on the journey, bro. I'm just, I'm just little by little just trying to figure it out. Uh, I think ultimately where I see my life, where I'm, I'm starting to develop clarity is, is speaking, teaching, and writing. I think that's kind of the, the avenue that I think is laying out before me. Uh, but I'm still on the journey, as will all of you will be on that journey. Because listen, 43 is young. At, 40, uh, at 43, I ran my first marathon. All right? You could still run at 43, people. All right? <laughs> I ran my first marathon. Look, it's not over. Right? Don't throw any dirt on me anytime soon. All right? I can run, I can still get out, I box three days a week. So the, the journey's not over, right? But to go, clarify your question, it's like, what do I wanna be? I'm defining that with each moment, I'm defining that a little bit more. Good question, Marcus, love it. Thank you guys for your opportunity. Thank you to Leader Steps Ministry for allowing me to even be here. Appreciate you guys.